And joining us live in the studio is an educationist, Biodun Kolawoli. Good to have you. Great to have you too. Now, I know you're an educationist, so I'm not sure whether you're happy or sad about the new <laughs> development. What's your reaction, by should, the way? Should anybody be happy at the state at of our all. world now? All of us are concerned. That's right. It touches us one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And in the space of education, uh, for the safety of the children, who we call our future, we are sure that they are safe at least. Mm -hmm. And that's more important to me, that um, we watch our children grow to become all that we want them to be. That's right. First of all, they have to stay healthy. So the, uh, the, the opinion of the government to close the school at this point is, well, is welcome, mm -hmm. even though you might not be happy with it, mm -hmm. because you know they have to also uh, learn in the school space. Mm -hmm. right. Having said that, so what's the implication of that decision you know in terms of education students classroom teachers okay. you know of course a lot of schools were taking their exams before the closure or about to write their exams mm. so that's a big distortion like that for most of them because oh, some were doing their revision and all of those but a lot of um, forward-thinking schools are taking positions to embrace more of educational technology. Mm -hmm. And I must admit, when we did a research five years ago about the level of this, uh, the integration of technology into education, right. it was quite low at that time. But I'm happy that, okay, things happen that we did not plan for, and it's forcing a lot of us in the education space to see how we can integrate more into this technology and say, okay, if there is no opportunity for the digital Face me, I, face me, let me see you classroom. Mm -hmm. How do you run virtual classes? So you have a lot of them on their apps that are using the, the school app to run classes and asking parents to try to integrate it. Mm -hmm. Then you have some of them who are using traditional platforms like the Facebook, uh, the social media, Facebook, um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. We are with a lot of them unlocking and working their teachers through that new uh, technique and changes. The reality is that when you have crisis like this, mm -hmm. I say it throws up new opportunities That's for right. all of us to try. Mm -hmm. So teachers are happy, they are changing skills, they are asking new questions. Parents are having to embrace, okay, these children can also learn beyond just playing games and running entertainment on their screens, so right. it can also become a learning center. And the leadership of school is looking at education as, okay, what if this takes us one month? Yeah. What if we are going to go through it for the next six weeks? What are the things that we need to do as an institution? in order to give our children an edge and not to get the uh, disruption mm -hmm. in our own uh, educational space. But my own concern now is for parents because we have some of the schools that the schools are shut. Yes, parents right. are still going to work. So a lot of parents have reached me that, okay, where do we put our kids? What's going to happen to them and like that? But just in case we have to sit with them at home for a while, because if we follow the model the world has used to overcome this, it's that the city... Uh, the city has to restrict a lot of movement That's because correct. if it's the social distancing. Distancing, distancing. And you see, my call is that it's also a chance, it's an opportunity for us to build stronger families. I would like to work as many parents as possible that how do you have those conversations you have mm -hmm. never had? I jokingly, I was with my friend earlier in the week. I said, I remember, you know, this is not the first shutdown in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If you are 40 upwards, you will see that mm -hmm. we have experienced one or two shutdowns like mm -hmm. this. I remember our open 93 shutdown under our military uh, dictator. Mm -hmm. And you saw that all of us were asked to stay at home. I don't know if you can remember that. I don't have a clear okay. memory of that. You're not okay. trying to know my <laughs> no, age no, on I'm air. Not to. <laughs> all right. I just, okay, we had the subsidy one. That's the closer one. Mm -hmm. But then I remembered, I shared with people that it was a time I learned how to write from my dad. My dad insisted that each day we should write an essay about something we thought was abstract. That changed a lot of things about our family. Brother, our creative writing skills. I've written four books till date. My brothers also have written books of their own. Mm -hmm. And we could track, sitting down, we could track, how did we touch these things? Mm -hmm. It was those quiet moments in families. So what am I trying to say? How we will turn crisis into opportunities mm -hmm. that children can keep learning one way or the other. But more importantly, the institution we have ignored most times, that's the family because right. of work, because of economy, because of all so the much reasons. Engagement. Yeah, can now come into our full focus. And I must warn families I had too that it's not a time to stay on phones throughout, stay on tablet and stay with TV. Mm -hmm. It's time we have deep conversation on what our faith is, what values are what our fitness will look like, what the future will look like, mm -hmm. what will the field of the future look like, what, how, how do you handle failures? So those communication will go a long way to strengthen this next generation mm -hmm. 
about the things we think are missing. So it's opportunities throughout. We are trying to dig it out mm. and find ways to express it. All right, let's go back to e-learning. You mentioned that uh, your research of five years ago showed that we're not quite ready. Uh, now the situation is before us. We have almost no other alternative but th than to fall back into using the e-space, so to speak. What are the challenges that you foresee for both children, students who are learning at home, and whoever it will be that will be you know, taking care taking of care them? Of uh, at this time? Uh, yeah, I must admit there are four of them I've been able to identify. Mm -hmm. One is the teacher's change of skills to be able to deliver on the e learning platform. How you will assume that there is a classroom in your mind and teach as if you are live in the class is a skill calling for. Then the data management. Mm -hmm. You know, we have issues with data. Um, what do you call it? Bandwidth in our, yeah, in our country. Internet. So a lot of people feel it's expensive to use. There and um, how do I spend money both on the uploading and the guy that is going to experience it mm -hmm. back end is what we are we have to figure out how to f conquer. Then the third is like how do you keep a child focused on this class because it's also new to the child. Yeah. Like hey, so I'm going to sit. I'm not going to watch any other thing. This is not for entertainment. This is now for learning. Mm -hmm. How do you help a child to cross that to keep him or her focused and engaged even though he's not in a live classroom? Yeah. He's just trying to integrate. Yeah, but they don't have a lot of issues. I call them digital natives yeah. because they are born right in the digital they space are. and mm -hmm. that, that, that's really fine. Now the last one is parents, you know, that those are the digital immigrants mm -hmm. uh, like me that we are looking at it as, okay, are you, are you sure these people this are going, going to, to learn like that? Mm -hmm. How do you catch up with the child's learning speed? How do you ensure that the objective, the school leadership and their teachers have already outlined is being achieved? Mm -hmm. Those are things that we'll have you use around. So we have with the student the use of data technology, we have with the student themselves, then the teacher's change of skills, then the parents are saying this thing is a, is a way to go mm -hmm. and this is what we are going to give to it. All right, let's talk about the school calendar now. With all of this disruption, what will happen? Life first, I must say. Edu education must follow the flow of the society. You know, the education we have, we had before now was static. It was f it's, it's different from society. Mm. But if, the, if everything is touching on everything, you can't tell yourself you still stick with the old way. That's so right. I was happy Waek at last said they're going to have to shift exam, major meetings, even sports, everything is affected because we live in that interconnected world. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if we have to shift into summer, mm. because I'm aware even some schools out of this country are, are asking students to resume September mm. because they are not sure about how long this thing, but there, there are a lot of things they put on their learning platforms to make that to happen. But I, I strongly am optimistic mm. that Nigeria will win this battle as fast as possible, and we might have to adjust the school calendar, but we must not be afraid. It's about people, it's not about the calendar. Mm. So each state and each of the ministries, we have to sit down and say, okay, we missed one month here, let's put it back here. Mm. This is what we work here, so we can, we can close school in August. But let's be alive first yeah. and before we get educated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I completely agree let's with you. Be, so let's be alive life first. first. Well, let's save life first. Mm -hmm. That's where I stand. All right. And I also say we don't have to be rigid. Adaptability mm -hmm. is one of the skills of the 21st century. So things will not happen the way you have thought all of it will happen. So the shifting ground and ensuring the objectives of learning mm -hmm. is still being delivered mm -hmm. is something that every, I challenge every school leader to embrace and everywhere we can win and defeat COVID-19 again in our world. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Kola Woli, for coming and sharing you. your thoughts. Yes, we should all be alive first. Alive first. <laughs>